Welcome to another episode of Show and Tell Books. I'm Amber. And I'm Chantel. And today we're talking about our favorites. This is a question a lot of people have often asked us, kind of like, what are your favorite books? And for us, it highly depends on the category. I don't think I have a favorite book. Yeah, it's too hard to choose. Exactly. So we kind of came up with a list of different book categories, and then we picked favorite books depending on those categories. So should we just jump right in? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so starting off with our favorite comfort read. My personal favorite is Eden Brook. I think I've read this book over a dozen times. And it's just a simple, light comfort book. <laughs> I chose the Gallagher Girls series because it's one I have like fond memories reading in high school. And I've read it a couple times since. It was a hard choice, though. We, like, spent a lot of time talking about this. This is literally what we did, like, all day yesterday, is figuring out the different categories and then what books. And then we went back and forth between a lot of them. Yeah. Um. Next, our favorite book to recommend. Okay, mine is Thank You for Listening. You do love that book. I, I really do. I think it's a solid choice for someone who's just getting into reading romance or likes more women's fiction than romance typically it bridges those genres for me we also did a youtube video on that so if you guys want to check out more about thank you for listening it is a genuine genuinely amazing book so that one is a good one um my favorite's american royals so i probably will praise this book until i die if you liked the selection or grew up reading the selection read american royals it's a six point six person point of view of what would have happened had Washington not stepped down and then it's his royal family and then the different drama and hardships that come with having an American king and queen so it's amazing I loved it it was definitely a fun read the next book in the series is coming out soon so I'm sure you're gonna see more of it yeah we'll probably do a video on that all right, our next genre or classification was our favorite nostalgia read. Because of what Amber picked, I couldn't put that same book, even though it's probably the same for so many of us. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, but I ended up picking The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, or the Chronicles of Narnia series. It's just their childhood. Yeah, I went with Harry Potter. You, you can't. It's That's the ultimate obvious. choice, right? Yeah. That's the ultimate nostalgia read, I think, for probably half the population. Our next category is our favorite audiobook narrator. Originally, we talked about picking a favorite audiobook, and we just couldn't do it. Too many good choices. So favorite audiobook narrator, I went with Julia Whelan. She wrote, thank you for listening. Yeah. So. And she's narrated like over a hundred books, I think. A Emily lot. Henry's, yeah. Taylor You Can Read. Um, I ended up going with Stephen Fry. He narrated Harry Potter. That just is very soothing, very relaxing. It's a great audiobook. Um, favorite author. Favorite author was really hard to choose. So I went with Emily Henry. You've read everything she's ever published. So I think that's a fair assumption. That's kind of how we picked favorite author is like an author we've read a lot of their works I think so often people are like oh this is my favorite author and you're like well have you read like all of their backlists and stuff and it's like no I just like like a couple of their books so we were sure to pick authors that like we genuinely will go and read nearly everything they've published um so I picked Casey West she's a YA author that I love I own multiple of her books and I think there's only one book I haven't read out of the like 20 or so that she's published so She's one of my favorites. Um, this one was tricky for Amber. Your favorite trope and then your favorite book within that trope genre. So I went with One Bed and said Love Hypothesis. So I'm not committed to this answer because it was really hard to choose, but but it felt the most honest in the moment. <laughs> How many times have you read Love Hypothesis? Uh, probably like four. Yeah, I'd say that one would be one of your favorites then, yeah. Um, I love fake dating and like fake relationship tropes. I've read just about every book out there that has that trope. My absolute favorite is The Soulmate Equation. Yeah, that one's solid. It's like perfection. Again, we have a whole YouTube video on it. So yes. please check that out. Okay, this one was harder for you, right? The why favorite 
young adult standalone. Yes. This one was hard because I read a lot of YA and I love them. And then picking one that's a standalone, it's just, it's hard. Um, I ended up going with Tweet Cute. So basically, if you're a fan of the Wendy's Twitter page, this book is going to be just the perfect fit for you. Absolutely. It's, it's a fun read. Even you liked it. So. Yeah, I did. So I chose Love and Gelato for mine. It is probably because it's based in Italy. <laughs> I think that's a large part of it. We talked about that book back in April, I think. Yeah, it was a couple of months ago when we did a book club pick off of it. All right, tying in with that, our favorite young adult series. Okay, we had a lot of discussion on this. I went with Heroes of Olympus, although I haven't read the whole series yet. That's based off of just reading the first book so far. We can caveat with, so far, Percy Jackson is one of your favorites, but Heroes of Olympus so far you've liked better. Yes. So that's the like backstory of why I let you pick Heroes of Olympus with only reading the first book. I ended up picking the selection series. I talked about it earlier. The series is just YA perfection. We also will put this in. Both of us chose. One of us is lying. It's just a different YA book than what you'd normally imagine, I think. Yeah. It's very like almost intro into adult thrillers, but in a very YA kind of way. So that one, stay tuned for that because that's going to be fun. Okay. This is a category that I don't read a lot of. From, and so. I think we had to define what it was in order to pick the books. So we're going paranormal. I went with a Million Junes as my preferred pick for this category. By Which I could fit. Yeah. And I know there are going to be a lot of people that are like, uh, it's not really a paranormal read, but we define paranormal as mythical in origin. A Million Junes deals mostly with the paranormal as in ghosts and spirits. So that's why it's kind of an tricky one so amber also picked a different book that's more traditionally paranormal very regular secret society of witches okay yeah i don't <laughs> read a lot from this category and i ended up picking a discovery of witches um it's basically kind of adult twilight with like academia thrown in i loved it we're gonna do a video for it when spooky season comes up in october because i'm gonna convince amber to read it and you guys will hear more of our thoughts then. Yeah. Okay, next category is a fairy tale retelling. And again, I don't read a lot. From I had to include this because I thought Amber read more. I still haven't picked a book. That's okay. All right, I'll take this category entirely then. There's so many good fairy tale retellings. Um, my absolute favorite, and I'm pretty sure it's actually a fan favorite across multiple people would be this Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer so Amber has it on her list I've been begging her to read it for a while I'm sure we'll do an update at some point in time next up favorite classic okay so I've been reading a lot of classics and if you've followed along you've noticed I don't like a lot of classics so it was an easy choice to say Sherlock Holmes those books are just so good yeah um, I ended up picking The Alchemist. If you've watched some of our videos, you'll know that like we talk about that book a lot. I genuinely love that book when it comes to a classic that makes you actually feel educated when you're done reading it. And, you know, it's kind of like a fun flex in a way. It's just an easy classic to read. Um, favorite memoir slash nonfiction book. So I chose Lessons from the Edge. This was written by Maria Yanovich, who used to be the U.S. ambassador in Ukraine, and tells her story about serving in the U.S. State Department as a Foreign Service officer. I thought it was incredibly well written and great insight into how others serve our country. Interesting. I think you've told me about that one, and I do think it's on my list. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, I ended up picking The Choice by Edith Eager. She was imprisoned in the Holocaust, and it's kind of her story of how she survived that and what she went on to do after um, World War II. And it seriously is a book that I still think about, and it's been two years since I read it. It is mind-blowing in the 
lessons that eager teaches especially because she went and got like a psychology degree Mm -hmm. and so it's all comes down to we have the choice to pick what we focus on and that is what allows a certain freedom and it was just beautifully done so favorite dystopian why that's divergent it's a good one i did 1984 i am excited about this one okay your favorite thriller so i said 11 22 63 by stephen king um I don't read a lot of Stephen King, but this is one of his books I would recommend to most people. I picked The Golden Couple. This is just, it's one of those thrillers where like I sat up at the end and I was like, what the frick just happened? Like plot twists galore, really well written. Yeah, I read thriller mostly in the fall time. So You're a really, mood reader I too. I am a mood reader. So it was hard to like pick a book for this category because it's been a while since I've touched the genre. Looking forward to get, digging in. And we'll have to make some lists closer to Halloween of like our favorite thrillers and why. Yeah. Okay. Next we have sci-fi, and this was one where we kind of wanted to say the same book again. Yes. So I took the Red Rising. The book is so good, guys. It took us like. 10 years to get around to reading it don't don't do that just go read it it yeah it's eye-opening in a kind of classic way but so fun um we also did a youtube video on that so go check that out um i ended up picking andy weir and project hail mary he also wrote the martian if you know that one he just has an excellent way of taking complex science subjects and dumbing them down Enough that I feel like I'm knowledgeable, even though I definitely couldn't do half the stuff his characters do. Um, all while telling like a super engaging story. So. It's always impressive when an author can write about something technical and make it accessible. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is a category that we kind of had fun with. It was hard for me. This one was hard. There's a lot of choices. So we went with category sports romance. I picked the cheat sheet. Man, that one's so good. And Sarah Adams has teased the second book in that series, which comes out, I believe, next year. So I'm, yeah. We're she, excited she. to see that. And that book's going to be good, too, I think. I went with the Brittonwood Boys series by Megan Quinn because I, I don't remember how many books are in this series. I think there's 12. or it, There's a lot. There's a lot. And I ended up reading all of them in, in pretty close succession. Chantel did not enjoy them. I read one book from that series. Romance series. We had a really hard time with this one. I went with The Simple Wild. It's it's a great series. And it's hard to choose a romance series because I feel like so often it's interconnected standalones Mm -hmm. instead of like an actual series where The Simple Wild, the first three books are following the same couple it's a a true series in that sense yeah whereas I picked the one in Rome series which is interconnected novels are not necessarily the same character throughout and guys we've talked about Sarah Adams and how much we love her and what she writes so you this one shouldn't be that surprising that that's what I ended up picking okay this category you read a lot more from than I do and it's Regency Romance this is one of my favorites Mainly because of the book you picked, I fully blame for my Regency romance obsession. I mean, most women do, if we're mm-hmm. being honest. I went with the classic Pride and Fetches. Obviously, we had to like that book, is what made this entire job then. Um, I ended up picking Kiss of a Stranger and the Jonko Brothers series, actually. All of Sarah Eden's books are phenomenal. She's another one of my authors that I've read everything she's ever written. So if you're looking for like a Regency romance that's just like, hallmarky and light in a way definitely check those out i couldn't pick one for this category but it's cozy mystery or cozy read yeah like i the first thing i thought of was a cozy fantasy and so i picked legends and lattes because i don't read a lot from the fantasy genre typically and this one is super accessible see this one was tricky because i read a lot of fantasy but they're not deemed cozy fantasy and so we sat there at our hotel lobby just being like wait what is a cozy fantasy then what actually defines this and it was entertaining but so I don't have one for this yeah she couldn't choose a cozy mystery or cozy anything I looked through like lists of books that people had already like tagged as that 
and I haven't read any of them or heard of most of them. So, sorry. All right. So our favorite new release from this year, 2023. True Love Experiment. It's a really good one. So good. I don't want to commit to any answer on this because I know that there are a few coming out this month or next month that I'm really excited about and I'm not ready to commit. Okay, that's fine. We'll do another one at the end of the year of our favorites of the books that we read this year. Our favorite historical fiction. I went with The Nightingale, which we did for book club again. And that's a solid choice. That one was very eye-opening um I ended up picking the rose code or anything by Kate Quinn really she's is phenomenal and I really love hers because she actually tells you the research she put into it and then what of it is real and like who the real characters are that she based the book off of and I just I love the books final category and we have to end with this but this one I'm so excited for because they're both fantastic books our favorite book we read because of book talk Mine is Divine Rivals. I have been singing its praises and then the sequel comes out in December and I, I'm so excited. We will also tease that we are going to be doing a YouTube video for both of these books. So stay tuned for those because we're both super happy about doing those videos. That was really badly worded, but whatever. Um, the book I ended up picking was Fourth Wing. I actually am really happy that Book Talk hyped this book up enough that I read it because I think it's spectacularly done. Again, it's sequel comes out in November. And I think so, yep. It, you will continue to hear more and more about it. Yeah, they're probably both going to take over Book Talk again come six months from now. Well, thank you for joining on this episode where we talked about our favorites. Um, it's a non-extensive list. It oh, was there's so many super hard to choose. Yeah. So let us know in the comments which of your favorites made the list or didn't. And remember to like and subscribe. We'll, we'll see, see you guys next time.